Good morning and welcome to Wayne's Lock Shop and LockReference.com. Today we are going to be looking at the Quickset technology in the Schlage or SC1 keyway format. Here you can see that we're utilizing a Lishi tool. Uh, this is a little trick and a little play on the event that's going on right now. Uh, this was not actually picked. This is just me having some fun and um, just entertaining everybody here. But no, it was not actually picked. The reverse sidebar system will not allow that to happen because you have tension on the sidebar and it does not allow the tension to actually put any pressure on any of the wafers. So the reverse sidebar, from what I can tell and what I gathered in my personal opinion, will not allow you to pick this lock. There's also not a way to slip the shim in down through the side to get tension or pressure on that sidebar either, as we're showing here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tear this lock down so that we can get familiar with how it works. This works very similar to the KW1 or Quickset Keyway lock cylinder smart key technology system. However, as you can see right now, these little teeny tiny wafers actually slide on to the pieces that actually interact with the key itself. So unlike the regular Quickset smart key technology that just sits and kind of floats, these actually slide and lock into place, and I'm guessing, or my best guess is that's because it actually requires so many smaller little grooves uh, that it wouldn't work unless it actually slid on there. Right now, we're removing this little white plastic cap. Uh, the plastic cap is actually going to pop up on the right side, and then it's going to have to slide out on the back side of the cylinder. Now, I'm going to pull out all the springs. We're going to pull out all these little caps that actually interact with the lock itself or i'm sorry with the key itself and this is what the cylinder looks like completely exploded now i'm taking immaculate pictures and documenting everything that we see so that we can compare this to future generations we've seen the quickset smart key quickset keyway evolve through what i feel is four different uh, major modifications or updates and this i believe is the first generation of the schlage keyway one so the biggest differences are how the wafers actually slide and interact with the pins that interact with the key we can call those the key pins for now i don't have the exact technical terminology that uh, quickset is using for all of these parts so that's just what i'm going to refer to them as now we've put all those key pins back in and we are now reinstalling all of the springs and the white plastic cap. Noticing all of the changes, the colors, everything that goes with it is going to be absolutely important for noticing changes in the future. You, again, you can see how that clip slides in. It kind of crimps those springs down and then slides back in. Very, very, very small, teeny tiny little grooves. So one of the biggest differences um, in this lock from the Quickset version is that Quickset is going to have six depths. Schlag is going to have nine depths. So that's why I think they had to make that change and actually have those wafers lock in and interact because there's such minute differences in uh, the, the, the tolerances are so much smaller to accommodate that nine depth option as opposed to just the six in the Quickset KW one version. Here we are, we're sliding those wafers back in. One of the biggest things that you'll notice is that there's no ball bearing or anti-drill protection. Now, that has several different options, and it's both good and bad for the lock and for the security purposes. You'll notice there is no ball bearing, so it is going to be more susceptible to drilling attacks if you know exactly where to drill, and we will be drilling one of these in the future. I haven't done it yet. But that is one of the first things that I noticed. There's no ball bearing on the side to protect that sidebar from drilling. Uh, in the Quickset version, there is a ball bearing there, but that ball bearing also allows for the shim to be inserted, that real thin shim on the Gen 4 locks. You can insert that shim right alongside the plug, in between the plug and the housing, and you can actually apply pressure to that sidebar, and that is what allows you to start picking it. From what I gather and everything that I've tried and found on this lock, you cannot fit a shim in there because it doesn't have that open void where that ball bearing is. So 
It is both a security feature that it is not allowing that space for the shim to actually reach and touch that sidebar to apply pressure. And it's also a bad thing because it's not that drill resistant. For more information, check out Wayne's Lock Shop and lockreference.com.